GURP syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms that occur when excessive amount of irrigation fluid are absorbed through open prosthetic venous sinuses resulting in water intoxication, hyponatremia, hypoosmolality. Benign prosthetic hyperplasia is often treated surgically by transurethral resection of prostate. This procedure involves resection via a cystoscope with continuous irrigation of bladder to aid in visualization and removal of blood and resected material. This irrigating fluid is usually a nearly isotonic non-electrolyte fluid containing glycine or a mixture of sorbitol and mannitol. The procedure is accompanied by absorption of irrigating fluid via direct intravascular access through the open prosthetic sinuses and more slowly through absorption from perivesical space. The sign symptoms of TRP syndrome are due to the following factors. Intravascular volume expansion, hyponatremia, hypoosmolality, hyperammonemia and hyperglycinemia. Intravascular volume expansion Rapid intravascular volume expansion from systemic absorption of irrigating fluid result in systemic hypertension and reflex bradycardia. Patient with poor left ventricular function may develop pulmonary edema. Factors affecting intravascular fluid absorption are number and the sizes of venous sinuses opened, duration of exposure, rate of absorption of fluid 10 to 30 ml per minute. Duration should be kept less than 1 hour for the prevention of development of TURP syndrome. Venous pressure at the irrigant blood interface. The irrigant fluid bag should be at a maximum height of 60 cm or 2 feet above the level of pubic symphysis. This leads to a hydrostatic pressure of 60 cm of H2O which is maximally allowed. Normal serum sodium concentration is 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liter. When the sodium concentration decreases, it is called hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is due to intravascular absorption of sodium free irrigating fluid. This may cause confusion, agitation, visual disturbances, pulmonary edema, cardiovascular collapse, and seizure depending upon the serum sodium concentration. VT may occur at the serum concentration of 110 milli equivalent per liter. Normal serum osmolality is 290 milli osmol per kg. When it is decreases, it is called hypoosmolality. Hypoosmolality rather than the hyponatremia appears to be crucial physiological derangement leading to central nervous system dysfunction in TURP syndrome. As sodium is impermeable to the blood brain barrier but water is freely permeable to it. Thus, cerebral edema caused by acute hypoosmolality can result in increased intracranial pressure with resultant bradycardia and hypertension. Diuretics administered to treat the hypervolemia during TURP may accentuate the hyponatremia and hypoosmolality. Hyperammonemia is a result due to use of glycine containing irrigation solution with subsequent systemic absorption of glycine. Then the glycine is undergo oxidative deamination to form glycosylic acid and ammonia. Hyperglycinemia Glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. The use of glycine containing irrigation solution may cause visual disturbances including transient blindness during TURP syndrome which reflects the role of glycine as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the retina. Vision usually returns to normal within 24 hours as serum glycine concentration approaches near the baseline value. Glycine may also lead to encephalopathy and seizures through its ability to potentiate the effect of N-methyl D-aspartate or NMDA which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. Glycine may also exert toxic effect on kidneys. Hyperoxaluria due to metabolism of glycine to oxalate and glyoxalic acid may compromise renal function in patients with pre-existing renal disease. The signs symptoms include CNS effect, headache, restlessness, agitation, confusion, seizures, and coma. There may be decerebrate posturing, 
Clunas, positive Babinski sign, sluggish reacting people, papilledema, and bilateral dilated people. In CVS, there may be development of hypotension, pulmonary edema, congestive heart failure, cardiorespiratory arrest. In respiratory system, there is tachypnea, hypoxemia. Hematological symptoms are DIC, hemolysis. There may be acute renal failure. There may be metabolic acidosis. Some sign symptoms may be due to the glycine toxicity. This include transient blindness, hyperammonemia, nausea, vomiting, coma. ECG changes include widened QRS, ventricular ectopic, inverted T wave. In severe cases, there may be development of the VT or VF. Hypothermia. The treatment of TRP syndrome should begin the moment the problem is recognized. Terminate the surgery as quickly as possible. Switch to normal saline for continuous bladder irrigation that must be warm to prevent hypothermia. Support ventilation and oxygenation. Administration of IV normal saline and diuretics that may be needed to correct the problem. Follow the baseline laboratory test including CBC, platelet count, electrolytes, clotting study, PT INR, thromboplastin time, and fibrinogen level. Injection furosemide 20 mg IV. If the patient is on chronic diuretics, then dose is more than equals to 40 mg may be needed, but dosing should be based on the diuresis obtained from 20 mg dose. 15% mannitol can also be used as an alternative to furosemide. IV fluid with normal saline to maintain the intravascular volume as diuresis progresses. If the patient demonstrates significant effect from hyponatremia, IV hypertonic saline may be appropriate. Restrict the use of the hypotonic saline to patients who have developed central seizure or cardiac dysfunction. There may be placement of CBP line to guide the fluid replacement. If hemodynamic instability develops, arterial line and the pulmonary arterial catheter may be considered to aid the resuscitation. Monitor and maintain the serum potassium level as the patient becomes often hypokalemic due to diuretics therapy. Reassure the patient that any symptoms, especially the visual changes, are only temporary and their symptom will dissipate as their condition improves. Now how to calculate the irrigation fluid absorption? Volume absorbed equals to pre-operative sodium concentration divided by post-operative sodium concentration into extracellular fluid minus extracellular fluid. Extracellular compartment is approximately 20% of the total body weight. Calculation of the volume need to transfusion of 3% NaCl. Sodium deficit in milieu equivalent equals to total body water into sodium desired minus sodium obtained. Total body water is 60% of lean body weight in average man and 50% of lean body weight in average woman. Hypertonic saline or 3% NaCl contains 513 milli equivalent per liter sodium. The volume needed in liter equals to sodium deficit by 513. Maximum safe rate of correction of sodium is 0.5 milli equivalent per liter per hour. The most feared complication of correction of hyponatremia is central pontine myelinolysis or osmotic demyelination syndrome, which has been observed after both rapid and slow correction of serum sodium concentration in patient undergoing TURP. Thus, hypertonic saline to be run is calculated by volume needed to correct divided by total time needed to correct. In situation of significant hyponatremia associated with seizure or progressive neurological deterioration, it may be necessary to correct the sodium deficit more rapidly, 3 milli equivalent per liter per hour. Discontinue hypertonic saline when serum sodium concentration becomes more than 120 milli equivalent per liter. Now assume a patient of 70 kg man who has developed TRP syndrome and we have found that his sodium concentration is 110 mg per liter. Now 
we have planned it to correct with 3% NACL. As the patient has 70 kg body weight and it is a man, thus total body water is 60% of its total body weight that is 60% of 70 kg that is about 42 liter. Now how to calculate the sodium deficit? Sodium deficit can be calculated by total body water into desired sodium minus observed sodium. Here the desired sodium suppose it is 125 milli equivalent per liter and it is observed sodium is 110 milli equivalent per liter. Thus sodium deficit in milli equivalent equals to 42 into 125 minus 110 equals 630 to milli equivalent. If the rate of correction of the sodium is 0.5 milli equivalent per liter per hour then the sodium needed in 1 hour equals to 0.5 into 70 into 0.6 that is 21 milli equivalent per liter 60% of the 70 is the total body water in that patient now the volume needed of 3% NaCl equals to 630 that is the sodium deficit divided by 513 that is the sodium concentration of 3% NaCl in 1 liter that is equals to 1.22 liter or 1000 220 ml now how to calculate the total infusion time that can be measured by total sodium deficit divided by sodium correction in one hour here in this patient we correct the sodium in the rate of 0.5 milli equivalent per liter here is the total deficit is the 630 milli equivalent thus the total duration needed to correct this sodium deficit 630 divided by 21 equals to 30 hours so in 30 hours we have to transfuse the total volume of 1220 ml thus the rate would be 40 ml per hour chest auscultation and obtain chest x-ray to detect the pulmonary edema this may require aggressive intervention which may include administration of inotropic drugs or diuretics. Even patient may sometimes need intubation and mechanical ventilation support. If there is seizure, then administer IV midazolam 1 to 3 mg or digipam 3 to 5 mg in incremental doses. Seizure still continue, then barbiturate may be used 50 to 100 mg. Phenytoin can be used in 10 to 20 mg per kg but it should not be used more than 50 mg per minute infusion. Magnesium exert a negative control on the NMDA receptor and hypomagnesemia caused by dilution resulting from systemic absorption of the irrigation solution during TRP or administration of the loop diuretics. This hypomagnesemia increases the susceptibility to seizure. For this reason, a trial of magnesium therapy may be indicated in patient who develop seizure and in whom glycine containing irrigating solution has been used. Sometimes patient also need for blood transfusion. Prevention Resection time should be less than 1 hour. Keep the prostatic capsule intact until the end of resection. Irrigation fluid height should be less than 60 cm from the symphysis pubis. Intravesicular pressure should be less than 15 cm of H2O. When prostatic sinuses are opened during the procedure, irrigation fluid should be lowered, injection furosemide administered. Measure serum sodium during and after resection, administered regional anesthesia with or without light sedation to detect the syndrome early.